This little Terizaw Mini PC is one of the most impressive yet disappointing computers I've ever used. Practically everything about it is underwhelming, including the build quality, but then again, it was only 150 bucks on Amazon and I needed something to replace the old Distro Delves PC I was using last year in a pinch. So the point of this video is to see what peak performance on Terizaw looks like and to do that, I'm going to be testing four different Linux distributions to see which one Terizaw likes best. You can look at this video as a four-way Linux distro shootout on low-spec hardware. The Linux distributions we'll be seeing here on the bench are Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, and Endeavor OS because I can't be bothered to install a straight vanilla arch from scratch. To help set Terry's up for success, I went with the lightweight desktops where possible without having to install a bunch of stuff from scratch. So OpenSUSE and Endeavor OS are using XFCE because you can install them with XFCE preloaded, but Fedora is using GNOME because that's the default desktop and I didn't want to use a spin or unofficial ISO or something like that. And of course Ubuntu is going to be Xubuntu 20.10. On Ubuntu, I plugged in the Kisak Mesa PPA to get us a more recent version of Mesa, and for Endeavor, I got us the Zen kernel because it's reported to be faster than the vanilla kernel. If you have any ideas for configurations to test, let me know in the comments. So Terry's eye here is rocking an Intel Celeron N3350 released in 2016. It's an Apollo Lake processor and is manufactured on a 14 nanometer process. This puny Celeron operates at just 1.1 GHz with a burst frequency of up to 2.4 GHz, but the maximum I ever saw in any of these tests was 2.1. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. It comes packing an HD500 GPU running at 200 MHz with a burst of 650 MHz. The memory controller can supposedly support up to DDR4-2400 and at a maximum of 8 GB, but little Teriza here is just running 4 gigabytes of DDR3-1600 and it's apparently soldered straight onto the board. It's worth pointing out that this little machine probably isn't designed to be a desktop replacement. It's probably better suited for embedded applications or basically anything that doesn't have to drive a UI. Now the intro of this video is already pretty long so I'll just mention my test methodology real quick and we'll get into interpreting those results. I'm using the Pharonix test suite wrapped in a harness made of bash scripts to run from a screen session remotely via SSH for each test run. I install the suite and the tests once per distro and let the scripts automate all of the work. The full suite of all of these tests take literal hours and each bench test is run multiple times to ensure quality results. So this video has taken a very long time to produce. Pharonix works perfectly on Arch and Ubuntu, but Fedora and OpenSUSE had some trouble which led to some missing test results. These are going to be system type tests, and each distro may report their hardware and software configurations slightly differently, which is why the table might look a little weird. So the first suite of tests is a basic system test looking at the file system speed, network throughput, memory copy speeds, and graphics performance. In this one, we see OpenSUSE taking the lead right out of the gate with Fedora 33 stumbling pretty hard. Endeavor OS and Xubuntu are pretty close with Endeavor taking a lead in network performance. The GPU and memory test results were pretty close across the board with Fedora falling the furthest behind in the memory test, but not by a whole lot. The next suite we'll look at is a basic GPU performance test focusing on the raw output of the GPU rather than frames per second in games which can use a bit more than just the GPU. If you thought from the initial bench that OpenSUSE would lead the pack the entire way, you would be wrong. I suspect that there was something misconfigured on the SUSE side of the house because the scores here are exceptionally bad and one of the GPU tests didn't even work at all. The Betsy GPU compressor tests formats written for OpenGL and Vulkan applications, and Godot actually uses some of these formats. Excluding the wild OpenSUSE result, Endeavor OS and Xubuntu did the best here with Endeavor having a slight lead over Xubuntu and Fedora firmly gunning for third place. For the GPU test tests, <laughs> Fedora pulled quite a bit ahead with Plot3D and then once again with Testmark. These two GPU tests actually render something to the screen and it seems like this is where Fedora could really stretch its legs. 
And again, OpenSUSE isn't showing here because of some configuration issue. And now let's talk about a different type of compression, file compression. We've got a few different formats here and OpenSUSE took the lead on all of them. And this is where we're starting to see an interesting trend. Xubuntu and Endeavor have been neck and neck almost the entire test run. Going back to the results overview, we can see that both distros are using XFCE as well as the same GCC version and file system, but they are using different kernel versions, Xorg versions, and Mesa versions, so they have just as many similarities as differences. Fedora's performance in these tests was generally underwhelming, especially with the gzip compression speeds. And now let's talk about compilation times. At this point you guys can probably guess which distro did the best here, but notice that OpenSUSE is missing on the mPlayer compilation. I couldn't get it to build, so I had to move on to the other tests. Despite that, Tumbleweed did fare the best in these tests, but Fedora edged out Endeavor on two of them and Xubuntu on one of them. Now for reference, Fedora is using the very latest kernel version as of this video, which is 5.11.11. .11. OpenSUSE and Fedora use the same file system, BTRFS, and I was personally expecting Fedora and OpenSUSE to be much closer than they have been so far. But remember, OpenSUSE has been a little fiddly when it comes to some of these tests, and especially the GPU tests from earlier. And the last batch of CPU-centric tests we'll be looking at is encoding. I saved this one for last because it's missing a fair amount of data thanks to OpenSUSE, Fedora was generally on par with Xubuntu and Endeavor OS except for on the VP9 test with Xubuntu sitting happily in second place. Now it wouldn't be an EG benchmark without some gaming benchmarks mixed in. If you thought that the game footage in the background was from Terry Zaw, well you couldn't be any more wrong. All of the games here I'm going to show are old open source games because I couldn't get a single Steam game with a benchmark to run well or just with a test suite at all. This is the first set of tests where Fedora failed to produce a result. It just didn't want to open enemy territory legacy for some reason. No error, just nope. And as we look at these tests, I want you to remember that Fedora is using GNOME and Wayland here. Despite that, it's actually doing quite well, scoring the highest FPS on Xenotic by a couple points. Xubuntu took first place though, since it did quite a bit better with Super Tux Cart and a bit better with Tesseract. It's also worth pointing out that these tests were done at 1080p, and I think that you could probably get actually playable frame rates with Terry Zaw at 720p. And now, let's talk about the observations I've made while running these tests. Throughout the CPU bound tests, the fan inside Terry Zaw kept spinning up and then back down. It was never on at 100% for any duration of time until we got to the GPU stuff. I wasn't monitoring the temperature, but I'm going to guess that the fan spinning up and down as well as the frequency scaling had something to do with the temperature. But like I said, the fan was running at 100% the whole time during the actual game benchmarks, so I don't know. Another observation is that at the start of the compiling suite for Xubuntu, Veronix warned me that the CPU was running on power saving mode, which is a little weird because it's plugged in and it didn't even have a battery, so there's like there's no reason to run in power saving mode, we're not saving power. Not for like a battery anyway. But even more interesting is that despite this, Xubuntu was able to pull off decent scores and even beat Fedora and Endeavor OS on the Image Magic compilation test while supposedly being in power saving mode. If I had to rank the four distros from first to last place in terms of wins to losses, Fedora is firmly in last place losing the lion's share of these tests. For whatever reason, Fedora just doesn't like this hardware configuration. Which is really surprising because OpenSUSE Tumbleweed has a remarkably similar setup with the same general kernel version and file system, yet OpenSUSE took first place. The only major difference between the two is that Fedora is using GNOME and Wayland, whereas OpenSUSE is using XFCE and plain old X. I would expect issues to arise during the GPU tests, not the CPU and file system tests. OpenSUSE feels a bit like a hot rod that you know will just kick ass and burn rubber, but also might break down the moment you slam on the gas. And now let's finally talk about Xubuntu and Endeavor OS. Now were you expecting Ubuntu and Arch to be so darn similar? 
despite having an older kernel version, XFCE version, and an older X server version, Xubuntu was able to keep up with Endeavor just fine. I think that goes to show you that having the leading edge application and kernel versions doesn't always translate into better performance, at least not on this hardware. So I want to give a big huge shout out to Michael at Pharonix for making the Pharonix test suite, which is like the premier system test suite. And I also want to thank the Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, and Endeavor teams for making and maintaining such great open source operating systems. In my opinion, there's really no losers here because despite Terry Zaw being low spec, these distros brought it to life and there's absolutely no cost, it's completely free. I also want to give a special thanks to the artists for the background music and artwork used here as well as the other content creators whose work inspired me to finally make this video. If you liked this one, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.